Um, all right, so thank you all for joining me this afternoon. I am so excited to have um, studio artists from the Delaware Contemporary Studio community here to talk about their recent exhibition in the Hatch Gallery. It's called Best Seat in the House. If you didn't already know, the Delaware Contemporary is home to 26 artist studios where we have a variety of mediums and art levels and careers represented uh, in the studios upstairs. Every month they curate their own exhibitions that are on view in the Hatch Gallery that changes um, every single month. So there's always something new to see there. Uh, and this month is a group show called Best Seat in the House curated by uh, studio artists, Caroline Coolidge Brown and Caroline Chen. Uh, so I'd love for the Carolines to tell us a little bit about the exhibition, the idea uh, and how it came to be. Well, thank you, Brittany. Um, I, Caroline and I ended up, um, as we do at the beginning of each year, the, the studio artists draw names and months out of a hat to find out who's going to be paired with whom and what month you'll be showing in our gallery downstairs. And we drew each other's names. And so, um, and our month was February. But unfortunately, neither one of us felt like we could pull together a full show um, in time to, to really look good for just the two of us in February. So uh, I had seen one of Caroline Chen's pieces that was beautiful oil portrait of a um, yellow chair sort of sitting in a, a bed of flowers and um, I thought well that's that's really beautiful and fun and particularly because I had a really funky chair painting at home and mine is very different and it's got wildflowers and it was based on a, a Goldilocks theme so that it's got a ladder back chair in one corner and then the big very French um, voluminous floral fabric chair um, takes up the main space of it. And so just based on those two pieces that were already made, we said, how about we just invite everybody to do something about chairs? And um, a lot of people had pieces that would fit the theme already. Um, a lot of people made new work specific to the theme. Um, and it just kind of you know, we didn't know what to expect. And I just trusted that we have a really talented and diverse group of people here. And I knew whatever showed up was going to be great. And it was. Caroline Chen, I know. So I should say, Caroline Coolidge Brown, you are a printmaker. So that's your main medium. And you mentioned, Caroline Chen, you work in oil painting. Um, and so I guess the idea that it would take a long time to build a body of work for exhibition is something people can touch on or talk about. Um, and we can think about when we address all the different Hatch exhibitions. Uh, Caroline Brown, what was the process like for you? Or Caroline Chen, what was the process like for you? Or you know, when Caroline Brown came to you with the idea, was it something that you were kind of drawn toward or was it something that you're like oh I don't know that that could really work I feel like usually you get two people with different ideas that work together and that makes something better than if they're both always agreeing with each other does that make sense yeah well we actually came up with this idea at um, Tower Hill that Hugh brought um, us all together at a show earlier this year and um, she, Caroline Brown was helping me hang this particular piece. And I love chairs. Um, they're just really graphic and interesting. So, and she said, we should do a chair show. And I was like, uh, we have to do that. <laughs> and then when we saw all the chairs, the different um, interpretations and um, pieces come in, it was so exciting in the gallery um, to see that come together. And that's really, I think, how the studio artists, like the show at um, Tower Hill was the same way. Everything came together so beautifully. Um, so it's exciting to see all the pieces kind of talk to each other and everybody's interpretation. Well, and I should note that we have some work on the wall 
uh, in the in the gallery, but also there's some sculptural work too. Yeah. Um, and there's really a, a variety of mediums represented. Um, I don't know, Samara, I see you there. Uh, it might be interesting to hear from you when you heard and Rich too, this idea of a chair. What was the first thing that came to mind for you, Samara? Um, I thought it was really neat. And I thought that the idea of a seat, like the actual title, best seat in the house, um, was interesting and kind of got my mind going um, because the idea of a seat or place um, where you are at the moment kind of was what I ended up touching on. So um, I have a lot of different mediums I work in, um, but for this show, I wanted to do my ceramics. So I actually did a few vases. Um, and the main thing I was thinking about at first was the idea of, again, kind of where you are at the moment. Um, and I had been doing some stormy seas themed mugs. And so I took that idea and the idea of kind of being, being in a stormy sea, especially with everything that's happening in the world right now and with COVID and how probably a lot of us are feeling like we are surrounded by kind of turmoil and things that we can't control, um, kind of capturing that in a vase um, with feet being in the middle of a stormy sea was kind of what I was trying to do. And I was then further inspired um, to do another piece that was again a vase that is a chair that's kind of being blown um, in a tornado, which is so again, the same kind of idea of where you're at and not being able to control your surroundings and kind of just having to go with it. Well, and I love that. Um, I think one of the most exciting things about the show is the different perspectives and interpretations of uh, the seat or what it could mean that everybody really brought to it. I think that makes it so dynamic. And there are a couple other sculptural pieces in the exhibition too. And I should say, Samara, you work with ceramics and uh, artist Rich Lopez is also a ceramicist and he went in kind of a different direction. Rich, can you tell everybody a little bit about your work? Yeah, well, um, when Caroline Brown stopped in my studio and mentioned this potential, um, I immediately connected back to some thoughts I had about three years ago. And uh, as you know, the ceramics are as old as humans. And uh, the way people used to keep things cold was to um, perhaps put uh, water around a terracotta crock or jug. And because the water would evaporate, things would become cool. So having that concept in mind of cooling things naturally with ceramics um, and pushing the boundaries of what people would normally associate with ceramics, I had thought about, well, uh, perhaps in the hot summertime, you could have a chair that was made out of ceramic and that if you wet it, uh, as it dried, it would cool and you would be naturally cooled sitting out in the out on your porch. <laughs> so, so I didn't take the idea very far and, uh, at the time a couple of years ago, but then when Caroline came in, I said, okay, I got to go ahead and do something. So um, I um, uh, combined some of the uh, coloring clay uh, ceramics that I did with some, uh, you could call them tiles or rounds and actually made those as plugs into a, um, a, a vinyl uh, covered uh, lounge chair. So <laughs> hard to describe, I don't have a little picture of it here. Um, but um, anyway, maybe it'll uh, actually work. <laughs> <laughs> I should say for people walking, uh, watching, definitely come check out the show, but don't sit in Rich's chair uh, unless he invites you to do that explicitly. <laughs> um, maybe up in his studio or at one of the, another uh, performative uh, event. Um, but I love the idea that so many people in our artist community are always tinkering and really, you know, taking a departure from 
you know, what, what is on the wall. And I know that there's Caroline Brown, you've got a wrapped chair in there. Um, but we have so many different mediums represented in the studio community. I was wondering maybe Hugh, if you want to chat for just a few minutes, cause I know your, um, your piece in the show is also really interesting. They're all really interesting. Uh, sure. Yeah. I, uh, well, when Carolyn asked me, I mean, the first thing I thought about was, I don't know, decoupaging or something like that. But then I decided that that might be rather dull. And I thought, well, I, I, there were two things, really. One was I was watching a skiing program and I saw a chairlift. And I always thought that they were one of the most strange <laughs> pieces of machinery on the planet that you... <laughs> to get to the top of the mountain, you sit in a sort of lawn chair and get tugged up there. And I thought, well, that might be interesting. So I took that idea. And then instead of having them be utilitarian ski chairs, I just decided to design them in strange and colorful patterns. But I didn't want the chairs to look remotely um, symmetrical which always sounds like an excuse, but really wasn't in this case. <laughs> I wanted them to um, be somehow cartoonish. And the third, the other thing I wanted to do was to test myself and see whether I could do something that wasn't densely detailed. Left to my own devices, I tend to cover every tiny inch of paper with something, and I don't see that as a real advantage. So. It was interesting for me from a, a self-discipline point to try that. And I also was intrigued by the shape of it, having a sort of narrow piece rather than something that was more rectangular. And I like the idea. I mean, I've always enjoyed collaborating with these people. I think it's great. I think the shows that we've done together have been lovely in part because of what people have been saying, the accidental juxtapositions produce these really unusual combinations that I get a great deal of pleasure out of. Well, and as you were speaking, I was thinking of another <clears throat> artist that was very clearly inspired by something functional, um, Jenna Lucente. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about uh, about your interpretation on the best seat. So there's always two parts to the story, and I'll keep them both brief. But in my mind, there is only one best seat in the house, and it is the toilet bowl. Because the reality is, without it, people, we're nothing, right? We need that toilet bowl really badly. But really, in uh, my family, we kind of have like a history of toilet bowl jokes. Um, and who's clogged the toilet. And we grew up hoarding toilet paper before there was even COVID. So it kind of had that. But the second part of the story really is about kind of COVID in a way um, that I've been spending a lot of time at home and really becoming like very intimate with my own home. And of course, the desire to make some personal changes based upon the experience that COVID has brought to us. So that's where this little interior came from because I've really been studying little moments in my home um, and really thinking about them in a new way and thinking about my work in a new way. So this, you know, this uh, exhibit was a great opportunity um, to kind of have some fun in one way that's fun and one way that's like really serious actually. Well, and I was thinking about Rich Remnick, your painting, and Ken too, um, those kind of ideas, and Caroline, your work as well, that kind of um, the painted image of the chair as like a space sort of touching back to what Samara said, but more concretely a space where you are, not just a metaphorical space where you are like you and Samara both touched on. Um, and Rich Remnick, your painting in a good way just reminds me of a cozy space is it, is it actually the cozy chair in your home or in somebody's real home or is it um, an imagined cozy spot? Um, well, it actually is in my home. Um, 
And, you know, when I, I heard about this project, it's, you know, there's, there's a kind of anxiety of, of having to do something like on spec, so to speak. But fortunately, this particular chair has been glowing in, in uh, our great room for a long time. And I'm always like looking out for something that I'm going to do someday. So this all, all worked out. And it, it definitely, I think, feels like a portrait of a chair. Uh, that, that, that this chair became very animate and, and had like a kind of personality. It even has tattoos, I think. Um, and, and so, uh, you know, it, it just excited me and, uh, and it, it just dovetailed very nicely with this idea of chairs. I should mention there's also in the Winter Tour Museum, um, there is a room with a wall full of wooden antique chairs mm -hmm. and when i go in that room <laughs> i just get palpitations it's just amazing so you know chairs are good it was a great idea well and i think a chair it can also be a really symbolic thing and i feel like a lot of people also through this exhibition have given us a little bit of um insight i guess if that's a real space for you and then carson i was wondering if your if your um work if you wanted to talk a little bit about the uh the piece that you have in the exhibition so because i do figurative work um, i started thinking well what what would it what does it mean to be a chair well it's who's in the chair so i started thinking a dear friend of mine rosanna um, i use her for Hallie for photo shoots. And she's a, she's very creative. And the space where I photographed uh, Jessamine changes on a constant basis. And there's always Italian sculptures and different furniture and so forth that are always moving in and out of that space, which is the, the, the front hallway of her house. So I've worked with maybe four or five different models over the last 10 years in that space. Each time it's different. Each time we end up with something different. This one I love because it, it was lighthearted and um, up here it hasn't felt terribly lighthearted. So I wanted to have something that was a little fun. It, after the fact, after I, I, I looked at the image, I kept thinking about um, Jessica Rabbit from uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit because she had the hair going across the face in, 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 in the portrait. So, so it was, to have a little fun. Well, and Ken, I saw you laughing at that joke, and I was also going to toss it to you because I feel like your work is generally pretty figurative too. It's, there's something about ready heads for Jimmy. <laughs> you, you got proud and easy. There, there are so many redheaded models. Van Gogh had one. There. Everybody has a redheaded model, and I, I, I sent mine out to New Mexico or Arizona. <laughs> I wish the hell I'd gone to Arizona or New Mexico. Well, I and models or something else. <laughs> Shut up, Ken. <laughs> well, Ken, I wanted to hear a little bit about your perspective on the the idea or the concept of a chair, because again, like Carson, I find that your work is usually pretty figurative. So, what was the what was it like for you, either selecting a piece or creating a piece that was part of this show? The spinoffs were painting down at the University of Delaware, probably ten years ago, and back when I could see. And back when they had lovely people coming in there, we had a football player, and I called him a classics major or something, and I had him surrounded by the Trojan horse, and there, there's Athena and Mars in the background, and he's sitting in a goddamn metal chair you know he's he's in one of those folding chairs which everybody knows about and they're cold and they're nasty but this guy grinned and bared it and uh it, it, it was delightful and i got i got oh i've i've, I've got helen and 
Paris running across the front from a bunch of red figured Greeks. So it's it, 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 it's an exciting picture, quasi art hysterical. And then there is the uh, Minoan throne or the Minotaur throne where there, there's this beautiful girl sitting on the back of the Minotaur. So that's, who knows what, I don't know. It, it, it's art hysterical. Enjoy, 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 have a good laugh. There's no point in, you know, there is serious art and then there is, I don't know, what, what can I say? Well, I feel like that's a good, maybe a good toss to John Brakey because I feel like his work is often very playful. Um, good luck with that, John. <laughs> Wait, what you? I said good luck with that, John. <laughs> John, did you want to tell us a little bit about your piece? Shame on me. John, can't hear. Wait, John. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm muted because who could follow Hugh's wonderful explanation about why he and how he painted such an amazing chair? It's like, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Brittany. <laughs> what a segue. Uh, well, it's probably better that mine was more abstracted. Uh, I made something out of cardboard and lots of mediums and I kept adding more and more and more to it and it kept getting uglier and uglier. And so in desperation, two days Ugly's before- Ugly's good, Ugly's good. Uh, I don't know. Well, for you, uh, you could pull that off. I, I struggle with trying to get something to look ideal, but also have some sort of a form to it. And uh, two days before the deadline, it wasn't happening. So um, it's still sitting off to the side in the studio. Uh, and so I just made something else. And the idea was, you know, maybe it looks like a chair, maybe it's kind of uh, has a little bit of a personification to it, but I was very happy to be able to uh, to add something to the show, um, knowing that it's a very tough arena. There's some really great work in that space, and uh, the the group of artists here are always so collegial and uh, supportive of each other. It's like you don't want to let them down, and uh, you know, I I, I take that, you know that. That deadline, that prompt from Car the, the Carolines very seriously. So uh, um, thank you for including me. John, I love your chair. It makes me smile. <laughs> well, you know, literally put a little face on it. <laughs> put a happy face on everything nowadays. That's what, that's what uh, life seems to be about. It's like soldier through, smile through. We're all gonna get through. <clears throat> Everyone who walked into the gallery when we were setting up were drawn to your piece. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, thanks. I'm, um, yeah, that's great. <laughs> but it's it's interesting. I've been I keep going and looking at it, and I've been looking at Hokusai's work uh, recently, and you know his really famous print of the wave. There's something about the strokes on yeah. the back of the chair remind me of how he did his waves just throw that out for you well that's a that's a gigantic compliment um i'll take that and uh and not say anything else <laughs> <laughs> i feel like another piece in the exhibition that kind of um feels like a beacon that you're a little bit drawn to is ruth your chair uh and maybe it's the quality of the painting or just that it's kind of it's presented almost like a chair beacon. Can you tell us a little bit about your piece? Well, of course, the first thing I thought when I got the email is, oh, I don't want to do that, <laughs> you know, from the Carolines. But um, I find that whenever I'm invited to, to be in a themed show, uh, it, you know, I start thinking of things. You sort of can't help. And so I started thinking about all the chairs in my life and in my house and where they came from and there are a lot of chairs in my house and this particular chair is a child's chair that was actually built by my great-grandfather for my grandfather to sit in 
And uh, I realized that the chair has outlasted my gr great grandfather and my grandfather and my mother and I've sat in it, my children have sat in it, and now my grandchildren have. And so it sort of got me thinking about how things, objects, furniture mm -hmm. last. They're going to be here and they have a history. And so I sort of wanted to honor that little chair. And uh, I'm, I'm happy about that. And, <laughs> Oh my gosh, Ruth, that, that was getting me a little bit emotional there and overwhelmed thinking about that. But I also think it's, you know, it's perfect because our seasonal theme for these exhibitions this, um, this winter spring is object. And I guess um, maybe I'll give it back to the Carolines uh, to talk a little bit about their work, but then also um, if anybody else feels so moved, that idea of the chair as object or even the art that you make as an object uh, would be really interesting to hear about. Well, I think that it, it's like so much of what life is and becomes. And I think particularly as we have, like Jenna said, focused on our interiors uh, this year being in quarantine, um, the chair can be like completely utilitarian. It can be that metal folding chair, um, but then it can be something that's, you know, I think of Anne's uh, piece that's just an idea, um, you know, and Ruth, you know, this idea of the, the heritage of a, a chair and and all the meanings that can go into it um you know it's 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 one of those things that feels very simple at first but then can be really rich and complex for sure um and i i feel like that again i just come back to everybody's interpretation and the different spin or the different lens that everybody used to come at this this one concept or idea and i'm so thankful to you the carolines for pulling it together and making it happen um and for all of the artists that participated um we're just so uh, excited that your your work is constantly part of what we put out for visitors um at the delaware contemporary and that you bring this spirit of collaboration uh, to push boundaries and make new things and, and constantly get us thinking about uh, what art is or what art can be and what it can do for our visitors. So thank you so much, everybody, for just being part of this studio community and also this little conversation today. Uh, and if you are out there watching, we'd love for you to come in and check out Best Seat in the House. It's on view through the end of February. And remember exhibitions at the Hatch rotate every month. So you get a chance to see a showcase of all the amazing work uh, that studio artists are doing uh, at the Delaware Contemporary. And we hope that you'll come out and visit us soon. Hey, Brittany, before we go, I have to say, because Ken is uh, offering an illustration for me that my second choice for the title after Best Seat in the House was we're off our rockers. <laughs> <laughs> Rock on, baby. Rock on. <laughs>